about you all the while. Open with me in your Bible to the book of Proverbs. I want to look at three passages of Scripture. For those of you that might be visiting, whether it be online or in person, we don't have a traditional offering collection uh, here at Faith Family. We haven't since January of 2019. But because people give throughout the entire week, not just on Sunday, we take a time on Sunday to speak blessing over the lives of those who give and will give at Faith Family. And so bear with us as we are encouraged in our giving from the Word of God. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, it says, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. That's Proverbs 19, verse 17. Then in Proverbs chapter 22, this is similar, but it's different, a different passage of Scripture. In Proverbs 22 and verse 9, it says, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Then one last foundational text is Proverbs 28 and verse 27. It says, He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. I've been there where I've driven up to the intersection. I think it was last night I picked up my wife from the airport, got off at 290 and Highway 6, about to make a left turn, and saw a woman there, tattoos on her arm, and had a sign held up, looked very despondent, just leaning up against the pole, not much effort to ask for help. Uh, I've been on the street corners myself uh, not to collect money as the poor, but to um, pass out flyers for the church. I remember the beginning days, beginning years of this ministry. Uh, and I've seen the rejection from people just passing out a flyer. You know, no, I'm not trying to get money or anything. I just want to give you a flyer. And I've experienced rejection on what it's like to be out there on the street. So I can only imagine You know, why wave a hand if you've been rejected 500 times in the last 45 minutes? Sometimes it's hard to even look at them. I don't know their situation. Sometimes, just from the outside, I know we shouldn't judge based on what we see. God doesn't look that way. Um, the person may look like possibly they've got drug use in their life or some other substance abuse. For whatever reason, I very rarely uh, give to give money to people on the street unless I have a strong unction from the Lord. Very, very, very rarely. I don't know about what your experience is. Some people may have it already planned in their life that they always give or, or whatever. But I, I know the majority of cars that I see pass people on the street uh, are not helping. It kind of blesses me when I do see somebody roll a window down and, and, and give money. These individuals, uh, probably in the, more, in the greater sense, are what we could call the poor. But the poor goes beyond those that stand on a street corner with a sign, literally, and directly asking for help. I'm just taking this moment to identify with the scripture. The Bible says that there are those who hide their eyes from the poor. 
I want to begin talking to you over the next few weeks about giving to the poor. We talk about giving often. Oftentimes we talk about giving to the church. On December the 12th, uh, we're going to have a special offering to benefit the poor. It'll be our first annual special benevolence offering. The goal and the ideal of this offering is simply to benefit those that are less fortunate. Here at Family Church, if you've been around for any amount of time, we've, we have faith projects. Things that we are believing God for. Things that we are exercising faith to accomplish. Things that we're believing for and as a result we're sowing towards. And rightfully so. We should always have faith projects. You know, believe for buildings or believe for equipment or believe to expand and, and so forth and so on. Now, our faith projects uh, are generally directly self-benefiting in some way or another is for our benefit. And in other instances, some of our faith projects have been indirectly self-benefiting. You say, man, well, what do you mean by that? For example, we're currently saving seed to sow into other churches and ministries that need buildings or facilities. While we believe for a harvest of our own debt-free building, somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This special benevolence offering is also in the same way, indirectly self-benefiting. For example, when we sow into another church, it doesn't benefit us at all in one sense, but in the fact that we're sowing a seed, according to God's principles, we're going to reap a harvest. So there's a, a self-benefit when we're giving. It's an indirect self-benefit. You all see what I mean by that? In the same way, in this particular project, it is for the benefit of the poor. It's not for us. But what I want you to see from the word of God today is that it is indirectly self-benefiting. Some are directly, some are indirectly. We are going to sow into the poor specifically for their benefit. However, because we are giving to the poor, we are going to come out ahead. Y'all remember that song? You just can't be God giving no matter how hard you try the more you give he gives to you just keep on giving because it's really true you just can't be God giving, no matter how hard you try. Now, I, I, obviously, y'all don't come to church because I can sing. <laughs> but, but when I grew up, I, I can remember that song every now and then being sung. Anybody else? Yeah, a couple others. Amen. How many of y'all have experienced that to be true, though? That you can't be God given no matter how hard you try. So let's look at these verses as we prepare ourselves for this special moment. You can see the evidence of this indirect self-benefit in these three passages of Scripture. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, he who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will pay him back what he has given. The New Living Translation says, if you help the poor, you're lending to the Lord and he will repay you. The English Standard Version says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. The NIV says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. 
and he will reward them. This is a little bit different. Instead of just repay or pay back, this translation says that the Lord will repay or reward them for what they have done. Somebody say reward. And then as a second confirmation in a different translation, the CSB, Christian Standard Bible, kindness to the poor is a loan to the Lord. And he will give a reward to the lender. Now, I've heard for years that there's different kinds of giving. And that's why I take time every Sunday to preach because we give all the time. And it's important for us to give in faith so that we can expect as a result. I've heard that when you give to the poor, you lend to, lend to the Lord. And, 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 and that's different than sowing where you reap some 30, some 60 or some. It's different than when you give the tithe and the tithe, the windows of heaven are open and, and, and there's blessing that's poured out or manifested in your life. And in addition, God rebukes the devourer. He doesn't destroy in your life. But when you give to the poor, it's a loan and God's going to pay you back. The idea that was conveyed to me and what I've seen up until yesterday when I or Friday when I when I saw this for a different uh, in a different light. The idea is that if I gave one hundred dollars to someone that was poor or hurting in one way or another, that that God's going to make sure I get that hundred dollars back. But I saw something in the word of God that I want to encourage you with. When you give to the poor, the Lord recognizes it and he does something about it. It could be considered a loan. It could be considered lending to the Lord. Why? Because he cares for the poor and he appreciates what you've done. And he's going to make sure that you get it back. But I don't know about you. Do you really think that the Lord is one for one in this verse? Do you really think that if you give somebody a little something that God's going to make sure that all you get back is a little something? I thank God for the NIV and the CSB. There's going to be a reward for those that show kindness, that show pity, that give generously to those that are less fortunate. No way God is one for one. When he does something, it's not according to our standards. It's according to his standards. He doesn't think like we think. His ways are not like our ways. If, if In our ways, if, if I loan you something, I want you to give what I loaned you back. Come on. Right? If you loan me something, I want to make sure I give you what you gave me back. If, if I bought your car and it had a half a take, y'all stay with me today. If I had a half a take of gas, when I get it back, boy, it better have a half a tank of gas. But not so with the Lord. He does exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that you could ever ask for or think. Is that right? And how about this? He does it according to his riches. He supplies, he gives, not according to our standards, but according to his riches in glory. So wipe out that idea in your mind that it's just one for one. Let's just say that when you give, show kindness, have pity, and are generous. I want you to consider giving a generous offering on December the 12th. And it's strictly for benevolence. Strictly, I mean, it can't be used for anything else according to IRS government standards. It's strictly for benevolence. It's not for us. But obviously, you can see it's indirectly self-benefiting. Oh, man. I think I'm going to save the other one for next week. And we'll break the other one down next week. Um, so let me conclude by saying, or, or by asking this question. Do you give to the poor? And I had to ask myself this question. So I'm not standing from a seat of judgment. Over the next several weeks, we're going to examine ourselves as it relates to this do do you give to the poor i don't want you to answer this quickly 
Take some time over the next several weeks to think about it. Think it through with me as we examine what the Bible has to say about giving to the poor. The Bible obviously talks about it. We're going to ask five different questions. Today we're asking, do we give to the poor? We're going to ask, how do we give to the poor? How do you give to the poor? What do you give to the poor? Why do you give to the poor? You know, some people give to the poor because they feel bad. Not that the poor feel bad. It just bothers me looking at you. So here, just take this. How many of y'all know that's true? Uh, So why do we give to the poor? When do we give to the poor? Where do we give to the poor? As your pastor, I'm asking you to consider believing God for a specific amount to sow into this special benevolence offering. This is going to be a faith project. That means don't just look in your account and get something. Believe for something. If you want to sow $200, don't just go into your checking or your savings account and get it. Ask God for it. But believe for it. Claim it. out. How how about better? God's already given us everything that we have need in this life, including seed. He brings into our head great multiplied seed. Claim $200 to come. You'll get a rebate, rebate check from in, in, uh, the car insurance. You know, they just, it was an overpayment or something changed or whatever, and they send you back a $215 check. Come on, y'all got to help me now. What am I saying? I'm literally, I'm literally saying believe for it. Believe for it. You've got time. Ask God to, you know, when it was time to pay uh, taxes, they didn't just go into the treasury and pay the taxes for Jesus. Peter didn't just go into his account and, and you know, ask his wife, well, what, what do we have? You know, we, we got to pay taxes. No, Jesus told him, go down into the lake and cast in a hook. And the first f- fish you pull up is going to have in his mouth a piece of money. And he said, take that, and it's going to be so valuable to be enough to pay my taxes and your taxes, Peter. And he sure enough, he went down, and sure enough, he did. Amen. He used his faith for it. He believed for it. So we do this to train you how to live by faith. Let the 